So guys, there's no better way to get around us. Tesla has essentially butchered the performance of their recently announced Model 3, all due to regional constraints on the batteries. This is something that is not expected and something that Tesla has never done before, but this will be the very first time they will be applying this technique onto their mass marketed sedan, which is the Model 3 performance. So now, if you weren't aware, Tesla has just recently launched the Model 3 performance, which we originally thought was going to be called the Model 3 Ludicrous. Now this topic here I do want to save for my next video but I do have some previous ones that I will drop in the description below. There is a ton more with this Ludicrous launch that I do think will be coming in a software unlock. But now getting back to the major parts of this car, there has been so much anticipation ever since the original prototype was first seen. And to be quite honest, the hype was over the top. It was very comparable to say the Cybertruck and various other Tesla products, but when it actually came to light, it wasn't exactly what we were expecting. First off, there were a couple aesthetical things that we were hoping to arrive with this car, but eventually it came time and that did not happen. Things like the return of the fog lights, a new daytime running light design, and finally the front bumper camera. All those things were speculated and were leaks within the source code, however, that didn't actually happen and this is why we set our expectations too high and then eventually disappointed ourselves. But then putting those things aside, I think the general consensus is that the new Model 3 performance design is truly badass. Alright, so now outside of purely just the looks, there are critical components to this performance Model 3 that actually makes it the performance model. It has now been confirmed to do a 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds and that is just insane to say the least. In a car this size, this small, you would not expect it from any other manufacturer out side of Tesla to make it this quick but it is finally here and it excels in so many aspects outside of just the acceleration. Now we're pretty well aware that the car has been upgraded in many aspects including the suspension, the brakes and the overall design. However, the most critical part of it all is the sub 3 second 0 to 60 and Elon has even touted that this car is now faster than the Porsche 911. But even with that being said, there seems to be an expectation that this car will eventually be faster and be quicker than it currently sits. The new fourth generation motor is something new, something much more capable than it currently is advertised and I am pretty certain there will be an unlock that will take it to its full potential down the line. Now just on a side note here and for curiosity's sake, the old Model 3 performance had just above 500 horsepower and in some cases can also do 0 to 60s in 2.9 seconds. So with this upgraded motor in the new Model 3 performance, we are sure that Tesla is downplaying the number and will eventually go much quicker. So yeah, all that sounds really great, but now there is a critical component to all of this that has us really confused and some of us very frustrated. This is the first time ever Tesla has decided to separate between the different regions, giving two separate variants of the same car. The launch of the Model 3 performance brought us power figures that were truly incredible and this is what we were all expecting once we received our vehicle. Vehicles. Sitting at 510 horsepower and 0 to 60s at 2.9 seconds, this is going to be the car that all of us were anticipating all along. However, that isn't the case and this is only available for the US market. Now what's odd about all this is that Tesla's very own website advertises this number as well as their own official Twitter page. This also runs down all the details of what the performance of this car is going to be. But when it came down to it and we dug a little bit deeper, we notice that there are two variants of this car, one better than the other. Tesla has now decided to separate into two variants of the Model 3 performance depending on geographic location. You are either in the US or you simply are not. So going straight down to it, if you do live in the US, you have a car that has 510 horsepower and does 0 to 60s in 2.9. Whereas anywhere else in the world, including Canada, you do have one that is simply just 460. Now the clear reason behind all this is because the different type of battery that they will be using. One is going to be the LG and the other being the Panasonic. One has 82 kilowatt hour, whereas the other has 79. So where this puts us in is that we are short 50 horsepower living outside of the US and it puts us in a very weird situation where if your performance vehicle is going to be slower than the 
other. Now realistically, on paper, it doesn't seem all that bad. The 50 horsepower drop isn't that substantial in terms of the 0 to 60 and the top speed. However, when it comes down to the physical aspect of the car, a 50 horsepower gain is incredibly big in terms of what you can get with aftermarket parts. I would say talk to any car enthusiast that does all these third party upgrades, you will notice that gaining even additional few horsepower is very very difficult. So this means that your car will be shorted that much amount of power and it will be technically slower. So let's get straight down to the numbers here. If we do the conversion because most of you do use the metric system, we have a 0 to 100 at 3.1 seconds whereas the US does have 0 to 60 in 2.9. Converting all the numbers, now we have a 0 to 60 in the rest of the world at 3.01 seconds whereas the US is still at 2.9. So we're roughly about 0.1 seconds off. Now the real question is why Tesla decided to do this with the Model 3 performance that just came out rather than the previous one. I do think this is all due to the output it's able to provide at this time around versus what it was limited to before. Working within the constraints of the suppliers LG and Panasonic, Tesla has to conform to their threshold. And the reason why before both the Panasonic and the LG was on par with each other is because the bottleneck being the motors itself, so there was no need need to have one quicker than the other. Now another critical component as to why the US is getting more horsepower and nowhere else is, is the fact that the Panasonics are locally sourced in the US. That means that they are going to qualify for the federal tax incentive. This is why Tesla is no longer shipping these batteries up to Canada. They want to ensure that all these batteries are made for all the US vehicles to get as much tax credit as possible. So what this means is that for Canada, although we've been getting the benefits of these free vehicles for the past couple of years. For now, if you do want to wait out for the US variant, the Panasonic battery, we will have to probably wait a few months to a year before the battery starts to outpace the manufacturing of the Model 3 and this is where Tesla will slowly ship these vehicles back up to Canada and this is where you'll also get the 510 horsepower. So a few of you guys have also sent me some messages on X on Twitter and there is a theory that is going on that maybe the 460 horsepower is more than enough for that 2.90 to 60. A clear example of this is that in the UK they are also selling the exact same LG battery however it does also say 2.9 seconds so if you do compare the US and the UK variant it doesn't seem like the limiting factor is the battery itself. What this means however is that the 510 horsepower is currently not in use and that means that there is a future potential unlock for these US vehicles compared to any of the ones outside of that. Now then this puts us in a really weird situation once again. This means that the performance model 3 with the 510 horsepower that is currently not fully utilized is going to get a future acceleration boost while the rest of the regions are not. So yeah however this plays out I don't know but as of right now this is what we're going to have to work with and I really do hope that Tesla clarifies and gives us more detail on this but I will be keeping you guys as up to date as possible on anything that comes up so make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and the bell notification if you haven't already done so and follow me on Twitter or X at hey John E. over there you will get the latest and you can chat with me and DM with me anytime. Anyways this will wrap it up for this one I'll see you in the next this is John once again peace out.